My name's Davy Chappie, and today it's time to get back to the very roots of the origins of D&D. The bravest little creature of them all, the Hobbit, I mean the Halfling. I'm gonna talk about the everyday life of the small folk as presented in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, as well as go over the in-game stats so that you can enjoy traveling to the ends of the earth in your own games. As always, keep in mind that most of this is just my opinion, so if you feel angry enough to boil me, mash me, or stick me in a stew, be sure to leave a comment down below. And now, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the wonderful patrons who pledged to my Patreon last month. Space Cactus! Night Vision Ninja! Chaos Plays! Alex Tuffin! Alexa Barco! Dankmonio G! Constellation! Maxwell! Patrick Rooney! Adam Picton! Mighty Deadpool! Paul Christopher! Adam Villarreal! Douglas McIntosh! Emma Allard! Michael Conley! Jeremy Clark! Truly, if I could thank all of you in person, I probably wouldn't, because some of you are really far away, and I hate flying on planes. But it's the thought that counts, and I will be thinking of you, always, even when you don't want me to. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So, halflings are those super short folk that want nothing more than to stay at home, eat beans, and tell stories by the fire. And yet, every once in a while, one or two unlucky shire folks somehow get caught up in big whirlwind plots about saving the fate of the world or something, despite the fact that halflings would much rather just continue existing away from the hubbub of normal D&D &D adventures like they've been doing since the beginning. Even when a halfling leaves the safety of its village and goes out into the world, there's a good chance that it can find refuge inside any given major city, since halflings are beloved by most races, and so are welcomed with open arms, to the point where they often create little communities of halflings within those major cities where they just continue to do their thing. Truth be told, it's not really known where halflings originally came from. They've just been around, doing their halfling thing of being peaceful Amish small folk while the rest of the world destroys itself in plots of racial unrest and political intrigue. Is a halfling society poised to become the next noble line of aristocrats? N no, but have some corn. I guess the closest thing to an origin story that halflings have is the story of how their primary goddess, Yandala, was just wandering around the beginning of time one day when she spotted a colony of wild halflings in the tall grass, and decided to capture, I mean adopt them, and train them to use their special skills. The select few that she decided to keep in her main party, instead of putting them in the PC of the mortal world, with the rest ended up being elevated into legendary status, making up the rest of the pantheon and giving halflings more family members to talk about. As that story tells, even their gods aren't exactly native to them, instead being practically adopted by the halflings because halflings are total bros who welcome everybody into their homes if they don't cause trouble, even primordial beings. In fact, halflings don't talk about or treat their gods like the revered holy symbols that other races see them as, but instead just see them as part of the family, using informal terms and phrases to make the gods sound more humble and homely, just the way the halflings like it. Hell, pretty much every god in their pantheon reads like a good old fashioned adventurer rather than an infallible god, such as Charmelaine, the goddess of luck and keen senses, whose feats range from solving a chamber of 1,000 traps, to stealing from Tiamat, to escaping a Sahuagan army. She carries a mace that warns her of danger, has a ferret animal companion named Zafin, and can send her spirit out to scout ahead for her. Now tell me that that doesn't sound like a level 20 player character and not a god. Along with her, halflings also have extended family in the form of Sheila Pararoyal, the farming goddess, Arvarine, the god of battle tactics, because even hobbits have to defend their home sometimes, Cryolail, the goddess of friendship and happiness, Brandabaris, the god of stealth and dickery, and Urugalan the god of death and mourning. All these gods are revered in ways that would be seen as unconventional by other races, such as with the mere tip of the hat as a halfling walks by a shrine, or a flower placed delicately, or maybe a strip of nice, crispy bacon. But they're always respected as an uncle or a grandfather to the halflings. Now all of this would make one wonder, if all that halflings want to do is sit at home and eat munchies all day, then why would there even be halfling adventurers in the first place? Well, there are a few reasons. The simplest one is that, for one reason or another, the halfling got shanghaied from its home and thrust into a magical adventure full of swords and fear. But for a more common explanation, we have to look deeper into the life of a halfling. See, when halflings are first growing up, they have a tendency to wander off and explore every acre of land they come across. As halflings grow older, this impulse mostly wears off to the point where they are content with the lives that they're living. But for some halflings, this impulse only grows stronger, and they feel a sense of wanderlust that takes them beyond their homesteads and into the great unknown. These types of halflings are said to have fancy feet syndrome, and that their god Brandabaris has influenced the halflings and bestowed his favor unto them, guiding them on their adventures. And it's just as well, too, as halflings are said to possess an almost supernatural luck that protects them from danger when they need it most. Almost as if every halfling has an unspoken bond with the forces of the universe. Or maybe it's just Aunt Charmelaine making sure the kiddos don't get themselves in too much trouble. But no halfling would be half as good without the stats to back it up, and halflings have some of the neatest abilities in the game if anybody would actually play them. To start with, all halflings gain a plus two to dex, so they're one of the few races classed as small, as well as one of the few races with only 25 foot of movement. They can speak both common and elven, their bravery gives them advantage against being
being frightened, they can move through other creatures, even enemies, which let me tell you is a big help. And they can re-roll their dice whenever they roll a natural one, which means that unless your new roll is also a natural one, you can say bye bye to crit fails, my friend. Then from there, the halfling has three sub races in the form of the Lightfoot, the Stout, and the Skags Ghostwise. Lightfoot halflings get a plus one to charisma and can hide behind other people, which no, you cannot just normally do with any character. Stout halflings, also affectionately nicknamed half dwarves, get a plus one to constitution as well as both resistance to poison and advantage against poison, and the spookalicious Ghostwise halflings get a plus one to wisdom and can telepathically communicate with anybody within 30 feet, provided you share a language. What I like about all three subclasses is that none of them really outshine the others unless you're looking for a specific class race combob, which makes it really easy to fit the halfling into almost any role that you might want. Hell, the stout halfling barbarian is actually a totally dope character choice, which I think is just amazing. No matter what you pick, I'm sure that with a little bit of humility and maybe just a little help from your extended family, you'll have a blast playing every session like it's second breakfast. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and comment if you did. Subscribe if you want to be a cool dude, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can slowly make my entire life revolve around D&D. Also, if you want to stay up to date on all of your Davy news, I keep a link to my social media in the description below. But yeah, Davy out.